When I bring people onto this podcast, I like to ask them to discuss their favourite film with me. And the film you have chosen is uh, William Friedkin's The Exorcist. Yeah. Um, a great choice. And the first question I always like to ask is, how did you first come across the film and, and what was it that made it so special for you? Well, I mean, first of all, the this was 1974, I believe. 74? Yeah. I think it was 74. Yeah, it was 73 or 74. It was around that area. Uh, I think it was... Uh, yeah, somewhere. I mean, I was in my first semester of college, so it had to be, yeah, I guess you're right. It might have been into 73, but I thought it was 74. Anyway, I went, I've, the, the subject matter, first of all, was completely untouched at that time. And it was such a groundbreaking, terrifying film because of that. Nobody had ever challenged, you know, the religious devil, you know, type of um, material that that film did. And it was done so well and had such an impact on me. That's when I really became a fan. And, you know, that's not even really a horror film. I guess it is, but, you know, it seems to be even more than that. It's a psychological, amazing film and and what how many m- movies from that era can you watch now and it's not laughable for whatever reason because it's so old that so many movies from that time you watch them now and it's like oh my god the effects are ridiculously bad and storyline is lame and the acting is poor none of those apply to the exorcist and i i still just think it's a great film. It had such an impact on me to be uh, interested in, you know, because Linda had makeup, makeup effects applied to her as well. And so that was my first uh, introduction to that world. And, And I just think it's still a great movie. Absolutely. I think it really holds up. I, I've seen it a few times, but I watched it again today. It was the first time I've seen it for a few years. And it's always shocking to me how well it holds up. Like, the bits right. that are scary are still scary. The bits that are shocking and provocative are still shocking and provocative, even today. I know. So imagine, you're, you know, you, you're too young to have been an adult to see it when it first came out. But as provocative as stuff is now from that film you, you you have no idea the impact it had back then you know the the crucifix thing and all that my god that was stuff that was never even talked about and here we're watching it on a film and and you know when i first i i don't often get really excited to meet people within horror because you know um I don't know. It just, it feels like just peers. But when I first met Linda Blair, I was like (laughs) excited because she did so much stuff as uh, a young person in that film. Uh, I always often wondered how did she not get screwed up from that? But absolutely. It's, it's, it's fascinating. And like one of the things that, that always strikes me when I watch it, however many times I see it, is I think you sort of forget how measured and controlled and slow burn that film is because you remember all the big, shocking, provocative moments. But right. so much of the film is about that, that build-up of character and that build-up of, of themes, I guess. And it was such a genius uh, way of doing exactly that. That, you know, again, I, all I can say is there. I can't think of another movie from that time that is still enjoyable other other than that that movie and and you know the music was great and the acting was tremendous the story everything about it was just great still is yeah, you talk about like the, the the Linda Blair's performance under the makeup, and you've got Mercedes McCambridge doing the voice, which is just incredible. Mm-hmm. It's it really is this this 
kind of bringing together of all of these different elements to create something that that really is you know still scary today like we've said yeah i i haven't seen it for uh probably a few years now but now now that i'm talking about i'll probably go watch it again and and just still be amazed at how it holds up (laughs) if you hadn't picked the film you'd chosen what other favorites could you have maybe talked about uh well another and and you're talking about in the horror w- world or just in general in general oh well I, it just happens to be another somewhat horror related type film and i was fortunate enough to do stunts on it uh was a movie called 7 and mm. uh I worked on that movie for a few weeks, mostly doing car stunts. And uh, uh, it was fun experience just because I didn't realize how physically capable Brad Pitt was <laughs> until I watched him get injured doing the stunt and uh, have the same attitude as all the stunt guys where – He's like, let's finish this sequence and then I'll go to the hospital. And that's what a stuntman would do. And he was exactly that. So we're all like, man, he's one of us. <laughs> Even though he was a, a megastar, he felt like one of the stunt guys. So w- it was a pleasure to work on it. But the movie came out so amazingly well. It, it made me think, even though it was kind of different um, subject matter, it reminded me of the exorcist because how well done it was and how effective and how you had to think and everything. So that would be, uh, another favorite of mine. Absolutely. That's a hell of a film. That would have been a, another great pick. And, uh, I'm sure someone will pick that in a future episode of, uh, of the podcast. What's your favorite film of all time? It might be a sophisticated classic, a childhood favorite, or an enjoyable pile of trash you just can't help but watch over and over again. The Pick of the Flicks podcast, hosted by me, Tom Beasley, is all about celebrating people's favourite movies in whatever form they take. Each week, I interview a different guest about their chosen favourite, whether I agree with their choice or think they're as mad as one of Tom Hardy's accents. So tune in to Pick of the Flicks every week on the Flickering Myth podcast network and subscribe with your podcast app of choice. Maybe your favourite film will be next.